Whiskey, Scotland's famous drink, used for hundreds of years for social and medicinal purposes. But what did the average Highlander carry his whiskey in when he was travelling on foot? Well, from my research, it seems to be that a flask made from a ram's horn was commonly carried. So, I have some ram's horns and uh, I'm going to try and make one. Stay tuned. Hi folks, Tom from Fan Dabby Dozy here with another video for the Highlander series where I look at the typical 17th century Highlander in the context of wilderness living skills. So what equipment did they carry, what knowledge did they have and what was the relationship with the land. So if you remember back to my Highlander survival kit video, I speculated that Highlander might have carried the whiskey in a flask made of leather, but more recently I have found some examples otherwise. So I've been reading this book, The Drove Roads of Scotland, and you can see by all my sticky notes I found it very informative. Um, so to put it in context, cattle was the main economy in the Highlands for hundreds of years, and drovers were people who were entrusted with people's cattle to drive them from all around the highlands down to either the central belt or England to cattle markets to sell them. And these drovers were hardcore, man. Um, I'm going to do lots more videos on them, but yeah, very hardcore guys. Uh, but anyway, I found a bit in here that talks about the drovers' average food rations. So uh, here it says, a drover's food has a few handfuls of oatmeal and two or three onions renewed from time to time and a ram's horn filmed with whiskey, which was used sparingly every night and morning. I also just got this book in the post, The Highland Folkways, and uh, I've only just started looking through it, but I've already found another similar account. A Highlander was said to carry a tup's horn filmed with uskebehe. Now, uh, uskebehe is Gaelic for whiskey, and it means water of life. And a tup is basically a male sheep that's still got his nuts. So I want to say a huge thank you to my cousin Ian, who got me these horns. His family owns a croft near the Isle of Skye and they keep a flock of Hebridean sheep and they recently harvested some of their tups and Ian very kindly kept aside some of the horns. He scooped out the marrow, boiled them up and sterilized them for me. So thanks Ian for doing all the smelly work. So although I managed to find two different references from two different books, I didn't find any actual pictures or examples of flasks made from ram's horns. Uh, the closest I could find was powder horns, so horns filled with black powder for their firearms. So we're going to have to do quite a bit of guesswork, but still try to use the materials that would have been available to them. So Ian kindly gave me a few horns, but uh, I think this one is in the best condition. But you might think, well, it's not very big. And you're right, it doesn't really have all that much volume. It only holds around 40 milliliters, which isn't really enough to have a party. But um, Ian also gave me a, a bit of a bigger horn. So you might think, oh, that's going to hold way more volume. But actually, if you look inside, a lot of the space is taken up by a very thick wall of horn. So it doesn't really hold that much more volume, and it's pretty heavy. And the book Drove Roads of Scotland mentioned it was used sparingly, and they also mentioned that the drovers would replenish their rations maybe every few days as they went along. So maybe carrying something like this would have suffice if you were using it sparingly. And you know, it's quite a nice size, it would fit perfectly in the folded pockets of my plaidger. I might even make a wee cord here so you can hang it off my belt. And the actual curvature of the horn means it kind of fits really nicely on my hip. So I'm just going to see what I can come up with and make do with what I've got. So for the spout, my idea for the moment is basically I've harvested a few of these sections of branch, which is basically where the joint meets the, the main branch, and I split them off there. And I'm thinking about drilling a hole into this bit, so that's going to be the spout, and then somehow attach it to the horn, either through nifty carving or natural glue or both. So I'm going to work that out. So I reckon the first thing is to sand the hell out of this and really make sure that it's nice and clean inside. And then I'll start working on carving the spout. Stay tuned.
So with the piece of wood I had, I decided to carve the spout in such a way so that it would fit snugly inside the horn. I then hollowed out the inside of the spout to increase the volume a wee bit and help the, the whiskey pour a bit easier. I then carved a shallow rim around the spout and then coated the spout with a mixture of beeswax and animal fat. So now I'm going to coat the inside of the horn with some beeswax to make it a wee bit more hygienic and also so my whiskey doesn't taste like sheep. Uh, make sure you use 100% natural beeswax, something with no nasty chemicals in it. Uh, big thanks to my buddy Craig who gave me this stuff. He studies bees and gave me some of his wax from his hives. To melt it I've just got a glass jar sitting in some boiling water on top of the hob and uh, just gonna melt the wax in there and then slosh it around the inside of the horn. Now for the glue I'm gonna make pine pitch glue and the main ingredient is pine resin which you can often find crystallized on old wounds on pine or other conifer trees. Now there's many different recipes for pine pitch glue but often people add something fibrous to make it stronger so I'm going to add some willow herb seed heads. Before applying the glue I removed any beeswax and roughened up the surfaces of the targeted area. So I first crushed the pine resin a wee bit making sure there's no bits of bark in there. And then finally, the last ingredient is charcoal from your fire. And I crossed that up nice and fine. I've sort of eyeballing it, but the ratio is probably one third charcoal to two thirds pine resin. Melt it all up with a wee dash of fluff. Now the difficult thing with this glue is it cools down within seconds. So I had to really try to keep it hot before gluing the spout inside the horn. I could then patch up any gaps by using a hot ember and some extra resin. I then lashed and waxed around the spout to avoid the stopper from splitting it. Now cork might have been traded in the highlands but I decided to go more common man and make the stopper from a twig from an ash tree. And I made a seal for it using linen thread and beeswax. I then added a hemp cord and belt loop from an old bowstring. Then finished the whole thing with a coating of beeswax with rendered animal fat. So finally, after quite a bit of work, there's the finished whiskey flask. Made from a horn from my cousin's croft in the Highlands. Spout and stopper made from an ash tree from my garden, held together by locally gathered pine pitch glue, covered by a recycled leather seam. The cord is made from an old bowstring and everything coated or treated with beeswax from Aberdeen. And only one last thing to do, that's to fill it up with your favourite whisky. I'm going to use this limpet shell with a hole in it as a funnel. So whisky of the 17th century would have been quite different to what we consider Scotch whisky today. It was uh, known as malt whisky, which is different to grain whisky today. Uh, so it was probably harsher in flavour, probably more potent, and would have had less colour than modern day whisky. Uh, but I can cover the history and medicinal uses of whisky in another video because there's a lot of information in that. So let's cover some of the negative points of this flask. Obviously, as I said before, it's quite small, doesn't hold 
all that much whiskey in it. The stopper, it's okay. It like, it's holding it, but sometimes if you shake it upside down for a while, some drops come out, so I could maybe make the stopper a bit better. I would also like to experiment with different recipes for the pine pitch glue, because I'm sure I could probably make a better one. Also an important thing to note, if you try and drink from this horn with the tip of it facing upwards, then it's something to do with it creates this air suction which causes the whiskey to shoot out at you. Uh, you know, you can do that if you want, but if you want a more relaxed dram, then make sure that the tip of the horn is facing downwards. But what about the positives of this wee flask? Well, considering I was pretty much making up the design as I was going along, you know, it's made out of entirely natural materials, many of which are locally sourced, so I don't think it's too bad. Could have turned out a lot worse. Pretty happy with it. And the whiskey doesn't taste like sheep, which is good. So thanks so much for watching everyone. I want to also say a big thanks to my buddy Blair Young, who designed my new logo. I'll put a link to his design page in the description below. Also want to say a huge thanks to everyone who's been sending me support recently for the Highlander series. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, please subscribe if you want to see more videos. Like, share with your friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Slash you.